Feeling lonely? Searching for a place to belong? Join us at Church Home Weekend, a few days filled with genuine connections, uplifting worship, and inspiring sessions that leave you feeling refreshed and empowered. Meet new friends, share some laughs, hear from Judah and Chelsea as they talk about Church Home's vision for our global community centered around Jesus. Learn how you can be a part of something bigger, making a tangible difference in your community and communities worldwide. Take this opportunity to invest in yourself and your faith. Register now at churchhome.org and embark on a journey that will enrich your life and empower you to make a difference in the world. Church Home Weekend, we would love to see you there. Hey, welcome back to another weekly service here at Church Home. I'm Judah. I'm the lead communicator here in our community that spans the globe. Uh, Hundreds of people, uh, sorry, I should say thousands of people from hundreds of countries all over the world are utilizing this content and utilizing the story of Jesus as we share it here. I'm so glad you've joined me. This is now week three in a series on the perfect peace that only Jesus gifts us and gives us. And I hope that you've had the opportunity to utilize this content uh, in the setting of dialogue and conversation, maybe sharing a meal. I want to remind you that weekly service is really set up in a way that perhaps you and a few friends right now are seated together watching this content that will go only about 15 minutes. And then I hope it leads you into uh, some awesome back and forth dialogue, discussion, prayer, and hopefully some great drinks and some great food. So thanks again for joining us. Again, if you don't know this format, I'm going to spend about 10 minutes explaining one verse of scripture from the New Testament, which I believe is 100% the inspired words of God that help us understand what it means to endeavor every day to follow Jesus. And we're focusing on the subject of peace, which right now (laughs) seems so incredibly elusive. Could we perhaps experience peace? in such unusual and unsettling times, and I believe we can. That leads us to what is called Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, and it says this in regards to peace. It says, God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Recently, actually it wasn't that recent, it's been a few years now, I discovered that as I slept, I was grinding my teeth things older people have to worry about. So I went to my dentist and he said, listen, you you need to wear a mouth guard. You're, you're going to have to wear a mouth guard. I said, for how long? And he looked at me and said, for the rest of your life, slugger. I don't know if he said slugger, but <laughs> I going to have to have something to guard my teeth so that I don't wear them down to nubs. I don't know what is so concerning to me late at night that I'm grinding my teeth as I sleep, but I need mouth guard. I got good news. You have a mind guard that is available. Maybe your mind is grinding. Maybe your mind is in an upheaval. Maybe your mind seems exhausted and weary and tired. I got good news. God has already provided a mind guard for you and for me. I know that example. I know that story. I know those statements seem so trite and so simple and so little and so obvious maybe. But man, they are so necessary and they're so true. Let me read this scripture to you again. God's wonderful peace that transcends your understanding and my understanding, comma, is going to guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. What does this mean and how does this work? Clearly stated, the scripture says, peace This extraordinary peace that God gives, we don't earn or deserve, but God gives it, will function like a mind guard. It will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. It'll guard your mind. It'll guard your will. It'll guard your emotions. 
It'll guard that space and that place where you make a lot of significant big and small decisions in your everyday life. You're going to have a guard there and its name is peace. How does that work? Do you need a guard for your mind, for your decisions, for your emotions? Do you feel unsettled? Do you feel flighty? Do you feel fickle? Are you like me? Like I, I literally have had experiences recently where I'm texting a friend saying, I'm having the best day of my life. And given just a few minutes later, suddenly the best day of my life has turned into the worst day or the most confusing day or the most annoying day. We went on a trip recently as a family and we had a sudden crisis and everything that I thought was great in life was tainted and turned and suddenly I felt like nothing was good, nothing was working, nothing's okay. And what does it truly all matter? I just feel fickle. I feel flighty. Oftentimes when these kind of unsettling and unnerving circumstances or situations come upon me, I feel funny. I feel dumb. I feel stupid. I feel like what happened to the strong, stable, consistent, spiritual leader that I'm supposed to be? And suddenly I'm turned into a mountain of emotion and this incredible, fickle, feeling, flighty, finite person. And I don't like that. I want that to be different. I want that to change. How does that work? I think Philippians 4 and verse 7 is for you and for me. Now, I want to back up because verse 6 says this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Instead of worrying about it, everything, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. And then comes verse seven. In fact, some translations say, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Let me give you three observations before I lead you in a guided prayer, which I hope leads to wonderful discussion. And like I said, some good drinks and some good food and some good laughs and some good joy and perhaps some good tears. And maybe you'll get a chance to pray for each other. And again, if you are solo watching this content, hey, jump on Pastor Chat. Let us know how we can serve you and pray for you. We are a community, not just a content platform. Three observations about this mind guard, this peace that is a mind guard. Number one, the mind can't produce this peace. It can only accept it. The mind can't produce this peace, it can only accept it. God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding. So this wonderful shalom, this word peace is shalom. It's a wholeness of being. It's not a perfect arrangement of circumstance, situations, settings, or context. It's literally a wholeness. It transcends the mind, which is to say mental ascent cannot produce this extraordinary gifted peace. You can't produce it. You can't manufacture it. You can't concoct it. You can't make it happen. You have to accept it. Now, this gets difficult. As ironic as that might sound, we would love oftentimes to produce, earn, deserve, or warrant something because that's how our makeup, that's how do good, get good, do good, get good. You get out what you put in, right? That's the nature of the human existence. But the transcendent truths of Jesus are so different. They transcend ego and earning and deserving. And they welcome you into this place of trust called acceptance. Can you accept this peace? Can you accept this shalom? Because the mind can't produce it. It simply receives it. In a moment through a guided prayer, we're going to do that. We're going to receive the shalom that is gifted to us through the perfect life and work and resurrection of Jesus. The second observation I want to make about the peace that is our mind guard, is this piece works like a guard mysteriously. Mysteriously, it keeps 
anxious worries from settling in. Now, I looked up this word guard in Philippians 4, 7. It's pronounced furain, furain. So think of like, I grew up in Seattle, a lot of rain. I grew up listening to the Foo Fighters, so Foo Rain, okay? They'll combine a little Foo Fighters in Seattle, you get Foo Rain. Foo Rain is the original ancient word here that speaks of a guard. It's like a sentinel. It's literally an armed guard who stands outside your mind, and it keeps anxious worries from settling in like a cloud. It keeps them from taking residence. How does this happen? Mysteriously mysteriously. You look at this verse of scripture and it's like, how does this work? How does it happen? God does it. And again, it's something we accept. It's something we trust. It's not something we do and we earn. Now, Christians are famous for taking these extraordinary, mysterious gifts of God and turning them into something that we earn and deserve. But nowhere in the text does it say we do that. Now, If you're wondering, well, is there anything we can do? Well, Philippians 4, 6, the verse right before verse 7 says, don't worry about anything. Just pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. So that's about as much as you and I get to do. What do we do? Right when we're getting anxious and fearful, say, oh, God, please help me. Tell him exactly what you need. Tell him what you want and thank him for all he's done. And the scripture says, then this wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will be like a sentinel, like a guard, full reign over your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Wow. My third observation is Jesus becomes the focus suddenly, mysteriously, and certainly, and not the fear. God's wonderful peace will transcend your, hum- your human understanding and will full reign your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. And there it is. And you'll know that peace the mind guard is working when all of a sudden, instead of thinking what you're so afraid of, you start to think about Jesus. In fact, today, one of the most considerable, potent, powerful things you could possibly do in that living room or in that park or wherever you are in the dorm room watching this content is actually to talk about the wonderful beauty and majesty of Jesus. Suddenly, when he becomes the focus, you know his transcendent peace is at work. It's just how it works. Now, I want us to pray. For the few minutes we have remaining, for the next three minutes, I'm going to lead you through a simple prayer. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Don't always do this, but we're going to close our eyes. And we're going to accept this extraordinary shalom. We're going to accept shalom, which is going to function like a guard or furain around our heart and our mind. Say these words right after me. God, I accept your peace. Let's say it again. God, I accept your peace. Maybe one more time with our hands on our heart. God. I accept your peace. I accept your peace. Thank you for your peace. Say that right out loud. God, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace. Now, the scripture says in verse 6 before 7, it says, tell God what you need. Instead of worrying about everything, pray about everything. What's the one thing that makes you worry the most right now in your whole life? With your eyes closed, I'm going to give you about 10, 15 seconds. Take the very thing that is causing you the most worry and tell God exactly what you need in that area. Exactly what you need. Could be financial, could be relational, could be spiritual, could be physical. Whatever it is that's causing you the most concern, most fear, the most worry, tell God what you need in that one specific area right now for 10 to 15 seconds. Thank you, God. I did it. I hope you did it. 
And the scripture says, thank him for all he's done. And then that wonderful shalom, which transcends human understanding is going to guard your heart and mind. So now we're going to thank God for all he's done. We're going to conclude this guided prayer by thanking him. What's five things you can thank God for? It might be your five kids. It might be five friends. It might be mountains, lakes, dogs, puppies, and more dogs. You know, what are the five things you can thank him for right now? In these 10 to 15 seconds, let's thank him for all he's done. Maybe for you, the mountains are your favorite place to go. The beach is your favorite. Thank him for all he's done. Thank him for the beach. Thank him for the mountains. Thank him for the rain. Thank him for the sunshine. Thank him. Maybe your favorite feature is your nose. Thank him for your nose. But thank him for all he's done in these next 10 to 15 seconds. God, thank you. Thank you for all you've done. It is impossible to actually articulate, to verbalize all that you've done. You are beyond description. You are beyond our words, but we thank you. Thank you. You know what we need before we even ask. And your handiwork is all around us the great architect of the ages. Lord, I I pray for my friends watching this content right now. Pray that they would experience the mind guard that is Shalom. That you would fend off those anxious worries that want to settle in over their life. And instead of fear and worry and anxiety, there'd be faith, trust, hope, and love. I pray this. Amen. All right. I hope you enjoy some great conversation and some good coffee. See you soon.
You're the greatest gift You're the greatest gift The greatest gift It's your love for me You're the greatest gift You're the greatest gift The greatest gift It's your love for me You're the greatest gift You're the greatest gift the greatest gift, it's your love for me. You're the greatest gift, you're the greatest gift, the greatest gift, it's your love. And you decide to cover me with all of your love and your kindness. You're the greatest of all